Hi. In this video, I'm going to explain what Cronbax Alpha is. So Cronbax Alpha is a psychometric statistic that was introduced by uh, Cronbach in 1952. But before Cronbax Alpha uh, was introduced, uh, there was a split half reliability estimate that was actually very similar to Cronbach's Alpha, but it was limited in that you had to choose what split half and different split halves gave different estimates of, uh, of internal consistency. There was also a Cooter Richardson statistic, which you still see around today, uh, and it was used uh, exclusively for items that were scored dichotomously. Well, Cronbach's alpha was much more general than those two because it represented the average of all possible split halves, and it also could be used for both dichotomous and continuously scored uh, data or variables. And that is arguably one of the reasons why it became so popular. Or both reasons. Uh, I should note that uh, probably 80% of the time people use the term Cronbach's alpha and 20% of the time people say coefficient alpha. Both of them mean the same thing. Uh, ironically, Cronbach himself in a paper uh, after 1952 uh, asked people to use the term coefficient alpha because he didn't think it was right to call it Cronbach's alpha because there were so many other papers on reliability before his, uh, but that really hasn't changed much. Most people still call it Cronbach's alpha, even though Cronbach himself preferred coefficient alpha. So what is it exactly? It's an estimate of reliability, and it's very specifically an estimate of internal consistency reliability. If you had to think of one word uh, in the context of Cronbach's alpha, it's consistency. And in fact, all reliability estimates are estimates of consistency, arguably. I think that's the most fundamental way of thinking about it. And I'll show you an example in a few slides what that means exactly in terms of consistency. It's not a measure of homogeneity, and it's not a measure of unidimensionality. And consistency in measurement is a good thing. So we have reliability and validity. And this uh, presentation isn't about uh, the difference between reliability and validity, it's about Cronbach's alpha specifically. And Cronbach's alpha is an estimate of consistency, and we consider consistency and measurement a good thing, all other things equal. So Cronbach's alpha is a coefficient, and it can range from 0 0.00 to 1.0. Technically, you can have a negative reliability estimate in the context of Cronbach's alpha. It's usually a pretty absurd thing to get. Computationally, you can get it, but it means something you know, very bad. You have uh, negative consistency in your measurement, uh, and so you have a lot of work to do. It's probably inappropriate to even estimate it on those data. Now, 0 0.00 means that there's no consistency measurement at all, and 1.0 means that there's perfect consistency in measurement. So an, a more realistic estimate that you might get uh, based on your data is 0 0.70, and that means that 70% of the variance in the scores is reliable variance. And I'm going to talk about what that means when I use the word scores in this context in a, in a future slide. So if you have 70% of the variance in the scores that's reliable, you necessarily have 30% that is error variance. And in research, we want data that have good reliability, good consistency, and we want error variance to be lower, all other things being equal. So I mentioned scores. 70% of the variance in the scores is reliable variance. And in the context of Cronbach's alpha, that means composite scores. And so internal consistency is only relevant to composite scores. And composite scores are the sum of two or more scores. And I write here, it could be the average of two or more scores as well. But when you're adding scores together, and you're analyzing data based on those sum scores, those are technically referred to as composite scores. 
and internal consistency reliability is relevant to those composite scores, not the individual item scores. So if you had an item 